business. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, one of my favorite things to do in the morning is to pick a camera and one of my lenses, just go for a walk and see what I come across to photograph. I sometimes have a vague idea of maybe an animal or something like that that I want to photograph, but a lot of the time, it's just a random morning walk to kind of wake up, get the body going, but obviously with the camera in hand to see if I can photograph anything. So I thought, why not bring you with me on my morning walk? So I'd like to make this into a series where each morning I pick a different camera and a different lens with me, or at least go through the ones I have. I have more lenses than camera bodies, so go through the ones I have, try a little bit of variety, and see how they perform in the field. As a first video though, I thought that it's best to start with what I tend to use normally. And this is my go-to setup. This is the OM1 Mark II, and it is the 150 to 400 with the 1.25 teleconverter built in. And I'll film this uh, using various things, little action four camera, DJI, and OM5, which I'm filming with there. Uh, might even do some drone footage, these kind of things, if, uh, if I have time for it. It's supposed to rain later this morning, so we only have about two, three hours before the rain comes. So I will just finish my cup of coffee and we'll go outside, see how we do. It's a bit chilly this morning. There's be frost on the car. It's the 10th of April. We're supposed to be getting into spring. The lock looks absolutely fantastic behind me. Unfortunately, I was not up early and ready for that. I would have been with a hide over there this morning then. We'll leave that for some other day. But wow. So I'm thinking, Let's find some of these small woodland birds, see if we can photograph them in the golden light, maybe even backlit. Now, when I come out in the morning like this, one of the first things I like to do is just to get my settings kind of ready, ready to photograph. So let's just get them up here, See where we're at. I'll take the teleconverter off so I have the lowest f-stop at 4.5. I will use the entire focus grid to focus with and I'll use bird AI focus. And then the shutter speed and ISO will kind of be set depending on how bright it is here. So you see here I'll have to go down to about 40th of a second if I want to keep an eye so of 1600, bump it up to 3200, give me maybe a hundredth of a second shutter, and I'll just walk around like that. Now, right now, I'm ready to photograph any small bird or something like that. Obviously, not when it's moving very fast, but they're very often they'll sit still for a little bit, and I can photograph them then. Uh, it's the 10th of April today. So it's a really exciting time for wildlife around here. Some of the birds have started arriving back. You can hear chiff chaff here. I see my first weeter of the year up on the hill last week. Osprey's been back for a long time, almost a month now. That's probably the earliest Osprey's ever arrived. That's been recorded anyway. But you also have birds, red wings and things like that, that are heading further north to breed, that are still hanging about. So there's quite a lot of activity. All the birds are getting ready to mate and breed. So there's a lot of bird song and it's just gonna be building up now in April. Uh, setting up territories, so they'll be singing on perches, which is really what I like to do a photograph now in the morning. Right here, I can hear loads of wrens. And I photographed a wren here in these conditions about a week ago, and I got some amazing backlit breath shots. So uh, if I don't get anything today, I'm gonna show you those. 
but I actually spent a lot of time with the wren. And that is something that I mentioned in my last video um, about going back to photograph the same species again and again. And it doesn't matter if it's a common one. In fact, it's probably better if it's a common one because it's always going to be available to you. You can always find it. You know where to find it. And you can just worry about all the other compositional stuff, getting the photography really nailed down and starting to get creative. So if you haven't checked out that video, I'll put a link to it anyway so you can have a look. It's such a nice bird. It's such a characteristic bird for such a small little brown thing. But it's got such a, it's got such a presence to it. You know, the song is one of the loud, loudest songs you can hear in the morning. And also the way it stands, you know, with the tail erect and just booming chest. It's just so, so full of character. So it looks great in photos. It's a perfect species to photograph. And it's everywhere. And it's not too shy. You know, it can allow you to get quite close if you, uh, if you take it easy and if you don't push it. And also they come back and sing a lot of the same perches again and again. And they're quite low, which is really good. Some of the birds right now are singing in the top of the trees, which are just, that's not gonna work for photography. You know, you don't wanna be pointing your camera straight up at them. But the wren likes to hang about really low. You'll often find it on these, you know, on the stone walls here, or just on little stumps, or on trunks of trees, or, you know, all these kind of things. But really low to the ground, which is just perfect for photography. So. If you are going to take my advice on photographing the same species again and again, and if you do have a species like the Wren where you live, I highly suggest giving that a go. I'm certainly enjoying photographing it and I don't get tired of it. You know, it's so much fun and I learn so much by just following it about and watching it. And what I noticed the other day was something a lot of birds will do when they come into breeding season. They do this intense flapping with the wings. I think it's a bit of a display thing. It might even be like a, a male dance for the female or something. If anybody knows, do let me know in the comment. Uh, it's a really interesting behavior. I meant to read up on it, but I haven't yet. So maybe you guys can help me out. All right. So this is Ren over here. The sun is back there. I'm getting myself into position. The sun is still behind slightly. A bit of a cloud, but it's really nice light. So I'll be happy to photograph it anyway, if I can. So I'm going to put the camera. Back on here, I've got my little chest thing here so you can follow along. And we'll see if we can get some photos. You put some gloves on, it's getting cold. As I said, it's a chilly morning. It must be down to zero or maybe one at minus one. All right, let's go see if we can find this good part. So right now, surprisingly enough, I think the run is actually quite high up in this tree. They do that occasionally, but most of the time they're low. So I'll just wait for it. Maybe try and actually figure out where it is. Okay, the wren just moved along the wall here. Unfortunately, we lost the light. It's gone behind a thick, dark cloud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around this side and get a front clip instead. Not really much point of going for back clip if I'm not getting the light. But I can still use this nice, soft light. It's still quite dark, but it can still be really nice. So I saw it moved along this wall right here hops around. It's like a little flying mouse. All right. Yes, yeah, you can see now, the sun is really going behind some thick clouds, so backlit is off for now. Let's just watch and see if it'll come back. It's close by.
down to 50th of a second shutter ISO 3200 f5.6 and I'm using the 1.25 so we're at 500 millimeter or equivalent to a thousand I love it, absolutely love it. The brand is such a cool little bird. What a good morning. I'm loving this. You see, now once I find this little wren, um, I don't have the need for running around and you know, continuing trying to find different species. I like to just stick with it, you know, and photograph it more and more in different locations and trying to get as many varied shots as I can, trying to learn something about it, trying to watch it. Maybe I can see where it nests which are its favorite perches that I can start to think about well how do I want to photograph it when it lands on those perches but it's such a cool little bird and it's just on this wall and it's just creeping along on the wall it looks great but then it jumps on these little branches like the branch we had on back there was absolutely amazing I love trying to put that in the, in the wider context because it was one of those things that when I photograph something small in the environment um, in a situation like I had there, that's what I look for, where there isn't so much mess. You know, there was just the bigger tree trunks, and then there was this little branch coming out, and there wasn't too much of other small, messy things. And the background was nice and far away, so I got it blurred out. So that makes it so that that bird can stand out a bit, because that's very important in a in kind of an environmental shot. You know, you can't, it can't be too messy. You can't have the background too close because then that becomes too much part of the image and becomes too messy. So I'll show you guys here. Uh, when I was out the other day, I think it was last week or something, I was photographing the wren. It might have been the same wren <laughs> just around here. And I was photographing it both front lit and back lit. When I saw the sun, when the sun came peeking through, I really focused more on back lit. And then eventually, I was behind the wall, behind me there, and the wren landed, I think it was on that root there. Could have been that one there. And what's great about that was that you see the wall behind it is quite dark. So, wall behind it dark, so the background is dark, sun rising over there. As you can see the brighter part now. So when it landed there, and it sang, that means that I can align that breath that comes out because it was a cold morning as well with that darker background and that means that the, the breath will really stand out and that's what I did and I got some incredible images 
And because of the wren, it's a fairly hardy bird. You know, if you take your time, you can approach. So I started taking images back there, really small in the frame. But for that, I do like the small in the frame for that as well, but I also wanted some closer ups. I made my way slowly and closer to this wall. I don't think it was as close as this, but I was around here when I took loads of images of it. I'll show you them in this video because I thought they were so cool. Um, one of the best mornings I've had with the wren. But yeah, this is this is my morning walk. This is what I do. And <laughs> sometimes I don't get very far. I'm about maybe 100, 150 meters from my house. <laughs> um, but of course, I'm walking a lot back and forth like this all the time, trying to improve on that image, trying to keep up with the bird. I see it flying through the forest over here. This is what my this is what my morning walks are all about. Um, just grabbing my camera, my lens, quite minimalistic. Normally I don't even wear a backpack. This is just because I'm carrying a bit of extra gear to film with and doing the vlog with. Um, but I love to just have this set up and maybe a pair of binoculars and that's it. And I just go for a walk. And it's a great way to just start the day, wake up. Science even supports that getting that first bit of light in the morning is the best way to wake up. And I find that once I start doing these walks, I find that so much more alert of the day. I don't get tired really fast. I think if you used to always get tired around midday or something like that, if we've done a bit of work, but you know, having a morning like this, um, perfect way to start the day. So I encourage you to do that. And thank you so much for joining me on this morning walk. Let me know if you want to see more of these videos and I don't have all the gear um, of OM system and the Hemzuko lenses, but I do have Quite a good lineup now so um, if you have any suggestions for videos and gear you'd like to see me take out on a morning walk leave it in a comment at the bottom and i will i will try and do them and yeah let me know if you like this concept if you want to see more of these videos and let me know what kind of gear you would like to go for a morning walk with anyways thanks for watching i'll see you next time